Hi, welcome to Cooking with Class. I am Chef Jeff Williams, uh, Associate Instructor for the Introduction to A La Carte. Today we'll be covering the fundamentals and the foundations of stock making. Now stock making is a very important aspect to any soups, sauces, stews. If you don't have a good stock to start with, you will not have a foundation to build up on. So a little time, a little care, and preciseness is very important in this. First we're going to start with a beef stock, the techniques of the beef stock. First thing you want to do is you want to roast your bones. Now the bones we'll be using is a three inch cut of beef bones, as well as veal bones, and trotters, which is also known as pig's feet. Now the beef bones, that's going to be the basis of the sauce. The veal bones has a higher collagen content, being younger, and that's going to give it its richness. Also the pork bones is also going to add more of the collagen and the richness and flavor to it. So first thing you want to do is go ahead and get some of your bones into a roasting pan. So now we have the beef bones in a roasting pan. You want to glaze it with a little oil. This is very important to make sure that the heat is evenly distributed around the bones. Give it a nice caramelization, bringing it out. Just enough to coat the bones. Once our bones have been coated, we'll go ahead and place it in a 375 degree oven until they're nicely caramelized. All right, so while the bones are caramelizing, we're going to go ahead and move on to chicken stock. Now the basis importance of any stock, you want to start with a mirepoix. Your mirepoix is simply a combination of carrot, celery, and onion. You can use 50% onion. 25% carrot and 25% celery by weight of the mirepoix. So if we're looking for a mount, uh, pound of mirepoix, we'll be using eight ounces of onion, four ounces of carrot, and four ounces of celery. It's very important to try to keep the skins and the debris off the product. And you don't want to get those bacteriums and the dirt into your stock. So basically what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and cut the stem off. We're going to go ahead and and just trim the hairs of the root base off. You want to leave that root connected because that's what's going to hold the onion together as you slice it. It's not going to go falling apart all over your cutting board. Okay. Once we have this off, go ahead and discard that. Take the onion, going to cut it in half. Go ahead and peel the skin, the outer membrane right off. Now the proper way of cutting the onion, the first cut you want to do is coming in to the side here. We're going to look for a large dice cut for our stock, large dice being three quarter inch cubed. Doesn't have to be precise squares in this case since it's just going into the stock for flavoring. It's not going to be anything that's been presented to a customer. You want to maintain that large dice cut all evenly so you have even cooking. After doing a radial cut around the outside, then go ahead and just slice right down for your large dice. Always remember, utilization factor is very important because the less waste you have, the more money you're going to be saving. And let's get this other onion done real fast here. If you notice, I'm keeping my fingers curled so I'm not going to you know, take off the tips of my fingers. Use it as a guide for your knife. Okay, so now we have our onion done. With the onion, we're going to go ahead and sweat this in a little clarified butter. We don't want to caramelize it. We'll caramelize for the beef stock, but for the chicken stock, you want to try to keep things as clear as possible. Okay. 
Now I've already pre-peeled my carrot, but you definitely want to peel your carrot and then wash it. Make sure all the bacterial, all the dirt is off. This has already been cleaned, processed. Same thing, I'll slice my carrot in half, into quarters, and they just come right down the line for another large slice. Now since we're only gonna lightly sweat these just a bit to get them going, do that over a very low heat, we can add the onion, carrot, and celery together. Unlike with the beef stock, the mirepoix will be roasted. So it's very important that you keep the onion separate from the carrot and celery. If not, what's gonna happen is by the time the carrot or the celery is caramelized, the onion will be burnt. Or just the opposite, the onion will be nice and caramelized and your carrot and celery will still be raw. Does not take long at all just to bring up a little key to that to start bringing out the flavors. Once that is done, we can go ahead and add our chicken. It's always best to use gloves when using chicken. In this case, we got some very nice chicken backs. Gonna go right in. Put one more in there. Okay, now that I have my chicken, and I'm gonna go ahead and add my water just to, up to the chicken. Now we're only doing a small amount here, so since I have basically just eight ounces of mirepoix for the small amount, and about three pounds of chicken, I only need about four quarts of water. Okay, we'll get this back on the stove and let this. Now always with stocks, we're gonna bring it to a boil, reduce to the simmer. You never want your stock to boil. If it boils, it's gonna release a lot of impurities. On that same token, we're gonna always start in cold water. Never add hot water to start a stock in because you don't want the impurities, to, the proteins to solidify on you, to tighten up. Remember, protein's gonna start cooking at 140 degrees. If that should happen, before it has a chance to slowly leach out, it's gonna cause a lot of the impurities that stay locked in with the collagen and it's gonna leach out later clouding your stock and giving it kind of a funky flavor and a little very unpleasant taste to it. Okay, once we have the mirepoix, the chicken and the water going, we're gonna go ahead and add a sachet. Now your sachet consists of peppercorns, parsley stems, just the stems, the leaves have a very bitter flavor to it. Thyme, sprigs of thyme, and a couple of bay leaves. We're gonna place these ingredients into a cheesecloth, bay leaf, parsley stem, thyme, and the peppercorns. We're gonna go ahead and pull this up to a pouch. Once you have it, we'll secure it with a little butcher's twine. And normally the larger stock kettle is you can hang it, tie it off, but in this case, just go ahead and cut off the excessive string. We're just gonna put the whole pouch right in. Okay. Now once again on the basics for the stock making, you can tell that we'll be here on the board for beef stock, we use five to six pounds of beef bones, one pound of mirepoix, about five to six quarts of water, and then one sachet. To that, we're gonna allow it to go ahead and cook. The beef stock will cook for approximately three to four to up to five hours. It all depends on the size you're making. Now in the kitchen, we'll be making 60 gallons at a time. We're gonna allow this to simmer overnight to extract all the flavors as we can. Hey, let's go under some fish stock. A little wipe here. With the fish stock, the mirepoix we're gonna use is called a white mirepoix. And that basically is gonna be leek instead of carrot. The reason why we don't add carrot to a fish stock 
is the carotene in the carrot will discolor the stock. It'll give it kind of an orange color to it. We don't want that orange in the fish stock. So what we're using, once again, is a white mirepoix. We're only going to use the very tender part, the white and light green portion of it. Go ahead with your leek, cut the top bottom off, remove the outer skins. So we have fresher, clean interior membranes going in there. And once again, make sure that all the cuts are approximately the same size. And once again, we'll stick with the large dice. I've already got some celery in there and cut up this. So we're going to start once again sweating it in some clarified butter. Now, even with the chicken stock, the sweating I like to do to bring out the flavor. Usually in the large thing, we're just going to go ahead and put the raw mirepoix directly into the stock pot. The chicken directly in there, add the water and the sachet. Chicken stock is one of the more easier stocks to create because there's not a whole lot of different techniques, such as the beef stock, as you'll be seeing here in a moment going through. So once we get to the clarified butter melting, we want to keep this over a low heat so we don't burn or even caramelize any of the ingredients. Go ahead, add the celery, the leek, and the yellow onion. While this is sweating, this is where we want to take some fish bones. It's very important to sweat the fish bones over the mirepoix because you want to heat it up to make the fish bones, the protein still attached, translucent. That way the collagen from the bones, the flavor will come out. In this case, we're using halibut bones. Now, after we have the bones in with the fish stock, what we need to do now is make a tent with parchment paper over it to keep the steam in there to help keep that heat circulating around the bones to help get them translucent and start steaming them off. What I do usually is I'll take my parchment paper, fold it in half, fold it in half again, and I'm going to look to where the two fold ends are. Right above the corner of the folded end, a pair of scissors, I'm going to cut a quarter of a circle. By doing that, I should have a nice round topping to go over the pots. In the very center, go ahead and make a little incision for a little steam escape. And put this right on top of your fish. Once again, you want to make sure that the uh, heat is very low so your vegetable does not burn and stick to the bottom. Once again, burn is bitter. And the only thing that fixes bitter is a garbage can. Okay, chicken stock's looking wonderful. All right, let's go check and see how the beef bones are going. They haven't been in here long enough yet, but I just want to take a look. They're starting to brown. Give that a few more moments. Now with the beef stock, browning the bones is going to help get rid of a lot of the fat. It's going to pull the grease out of the bones, leaving a nice caramelized collagen to bring out the flavor and the richness. After the bones have browned enough, we're going to rotate them to make sure the bottom sides are browned as well. Then we're going to go ahead and paint them with tomato paste. That's also going to give a little more caramelization and flavor. I'm going to sit this over here just to turn the bones around to so get the back sides caramelized. Okay, back in the oven to brown the other side of them and then we'll be ready for pasting. Now I can see the steam rising off my fish stock and it's starting to get translucent and they're sweating. 
and we want to add some white wine to the basis. We allow the wine to cook off the alcohol. It's very important that any time you use alcohol in your food, being a stock making sauces, it's very important to burn off that alcohol. Otherwise, that alcohol is going to go into your food and it's going to taste like alcohol. It's going to have a really funky flavor coming through it. So we're going to allow this to burn off a little bit. I see our chicken stock has come to a boil. We reduce it to simmer. This is good to go. Now, it's also very important at this point to make sure if you have any of the protein still above, to make sure it's under the water. But be careful. You do not want to stir your stocks. I get a lot more impurities going on in there. Oh, I can smell that wine cooking off. Sweet. Okay. So now we've cooked off the white wine. We've got our bones have been sweated. We're going to go ahead and add a gallon of water bones. At this point, we can leave it uncovered. Once again, we'll bring the fish stock to a boil, reduce to a simmer. Once you have the water going into that, we'll also add the sachet. But we're going to add a couple of other ingredients to the fish stock. One, we're going to add a lemon sliced in half into quarters. Now, if you're doing larger amounts where it's going to be simmering for a longer time, you can go ahead and leave them in half. But since it's a smaller amounts, we want to try to extract as much of the citric acids from the lemon. But also to the fish stock, we want to include some button mushrooms. Button mushrooms is actually is going to give it the body a little more color. It's going to give it more of a true color. So where the carrots will help enrich the beef stock and the chicken stock, mushrooms will do the same thing for the color. It's not really going to do much for the flavor. You won't really pick up a mushroom flavor to it, but it's just going to make it more than just an opaque translucent liquid. Okay, and that's good to go. Okay, now once again back with the beef stock. It's getting close to being done, so I'm going to apply a little bit of oil onto a sheet pan. Spread this around so the sugars in the vegetables do not stick to the sheet pan. We're not going to oil the vegetables. We're just going to go ahead and lay them right on. So carrot and celery on one. Into the oven. And onions on a sheet pan by itself. All right. This won't take very long for the onions to caramelize. It'll take a little longer for the carrot and celery. Well, that's going. Let's check the beef bones. They might be ready for pasting. OK. Now, as you can see, I have some caramelization going. It's nice brown caramelization. It's getting all the fats out. It's tightening up the collagens. Alrighty. So basically, that's exactly what we're doing. We're painting. We're just going to take some tomato paste on a pastry brush and just brush it. It's very important to get a nice coating, a nice even coating. You don't want it too thick. 
If you get it too thick, it's not going to caramelize properly. You're going to have just raw tomato paste going in. If you have it too thin or if you allow it to go too long, the tomato paste having a higher sugar content is going to burn. Once you paint them and get them back in the oven, you do not want to rotate them at this point. If you get that tomato paste on the bottom of the roasting pan where it's more hot, it's going to burn. So I tell us to get this back in the oven to finish browning. Okay. So once that's done browning, the next step is going to be is putting the caramelized vegetable mirepoix into the stock pot, adding the bones. One thing we will be doing is once the bones are done, we need to deglaze the pan. Now by deglazing is we're going to remove the fat content off, we'll pour that off, and all the little frickies, all the little bits of protein that is still adhere to the bottom of the roasting pan, there is so much flavor in there. So we're going to use a red wine to bring it up, to cook it off. We'll bring the wine down to a sec, which means almost dry. Okay. So. I'm going to go ahead and put the beef bones into my stock pot. So now that I have the beef bones into the stock pot, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to drain off the fat. Leaving the frickies in there. And this is what we're going to do is we're going to put the roasting pan on the stove top. Turn on your heat, keeping your heat low. Because you want to just focus the direct heat right onto the bottom of the roasting pan. We're going to let it heat up just a little bit. You should not allow it to smoke. Remember, we're going to be adding wine to it. We don't want the wine to blaze. So I'm going to add some red wine. Using a fist spatula, I'm going to go ahead and scrape it around. Loosening up all the little frickies, all that extra flavor. I'm going to keep stirring it, scraping it until the wine is pretty much cooked out. OK, we'll go ahead and let that all sec down a bit. Well, that's happening. The uh, carrot should be ready to come out and add to the uh, stalks and the onions. I have a very nice light caramelization on here. Once again, keeping the carrot and celery separate from the onions. Just about there. Add the onions to the stock. Okay, so we've got the beef fat, we've got the mirepoix, we've got our caramelizations going on in there, we have our all sec for wine, we're going to add the water. And now we're just going to let it bring to a boil and reduce to a simmer. Now when making stocks, especially with the beef stock, there is double stocks. And double stock is when you take an already finished beef stock and then you're making another batch of beef stock. But instead of adding water, you're adding that, that finished beef stock to it. So you're really enriching it with the flavor and the collagens. Double stock. Once you're done with a beef stock also, you can reduce it by 95% making a gloss. By evaporating all the moisture out of there, leaving just the proteins, what you'll have finished is a very tight, almost a rubber-like consistency that literally will melt in your mouth once it hits on your warm food. And it's such a decadent flavor and richness in there. Oh. And of course, we must have a sachet. Stocks always get the sachet. So this is basically a production of the stocks. The important things to remember is one, 
With the chicken stock, do not caramelize the mirepoix. You want to keep that nice and clean. You can saute a little bit if you want to start bringing out the flavor, or you can just add the raw mirepoix directly into your stock with your bones and sachet. With the fish stock, you do want to sweat the white mirepoix, which is the leek instead of the carrot. So this way you have the more the flavor, you have a cleaner look to it, but you're also going to add the mushrooms at the end to give it a little richness of color. A little bit of the acidic of the lemon juice to help with the fatty acids of the fish to cut you that. Acids always cuts fat. And then with the beef stock, it's all about caramelization, caramelizing the bones. And that pretty much covers the uh, stocks until they simmer. It'll take a couple of hours for these to simmer. We'll finish them up in the kitchen and strain these off in there. When straining the stocks, pretty much you're going to use a china cap. You'll line that with a cheesecloth and pour it through. Another method you could do is by using just a china cap and a chinois inside. And we'll be doing that method in the kitchen. This way you're not having to worry about tying down the cheesecloth and pulling in on you. And this way, any of the particles that come through the drain, we can easily stop it, take the chinois, and dump it out. Does anybody have any questions on this so far? Yes. Sorry? Uh, the weight for the mushrooms is just a, a little bit, just a handful. So basically, if we're going to make, say, three to five gallons of fish stock, you're going to probably use maybe six to ten mushrooms. It doesn't take much because you don't want the flavor. You just want a little bit of that color coming through. Yes? Demi is equal parts of Espanol, which is from the beef stock. It's equal parts of Espanol and beef stock combined and reduced by 50%. So yes, you're going to take Espanol, beef stock together, reduced by 50%. That is a Demi. A Glaze is just a stock reduction by 95%. Okay, well I guess I'll conclude our stock demo for that. We've got a lot of great starts going on here. We'll have a lot of great flavors and We'll be converting these into our sauces and our consommes. Thanks for being here. That was a little embarrassing. I had asked another chef, have you ever heard this or have this happen? He goes, I've heard it, it's happened before, but I've never seen it. Well, it's true, it works. So make sure your towels are clean and dry. Anyway, you must respect heat. It's not forgiving. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and let that all sec down a bit. Well, that's happening. The uh, carrot should be ready to come out and add to the uh, stalks and the onions. I have a very nice light caramelization on here. I could use a little more caramelization, but these are roasted nicely. Once again, keeping the carrot and celery separate from the onions 